members of the public, the city council uh, uh, last weekend, not Mother's Day weekend, last, uh, weekend before last, went to a retreat. And uh, we uh, spent, spent quality time, 11 hours of constructive, constructive instructions and deliberations among mayor and council and several staff members. Uh, I'm very proud to present the information uh, that came from the staff as, as it relates to uh, the input that was given to from the city administrator's position and a lot of the information, uh, the foresight that was given by council as it relates to the information in her, uh, almost a wish list by every council member. What was surprisingly and uh, pleasantly surprising that over 60% of the information that you're going to see, and this is a fraction, a fraction of the information. I promise you I'm not going to be long. And uh, <laughs> you said, I'll say that right. And so, uh, and so what's going to happen is we're going to give you a, 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 a snapshot. Again, the information that we share was in a booklet almost that thick. And so we covered information uh, that was just almost breathtaking to some degree. I want to, let me, let, before I get going, let me just say, let me thank our staff, mm -hmm. our staff that put that data together. Uh, would you, if members of council, you were there and they'll, they'll get mm -hmm. to see, would you, would you guys just give a hand to the people yeah. that, that put this together? Because again, uh, what, what I'm going to share with you again, this is just a fraction of what we're going to talk about. One of the first things uh, that I was very proud of, you'll see that we start with the city council in this case, uh, actually understand that number one, what we agreed to, what you're going to see, it will not happen overnight. Let me repeat that. It will not happen overnight. What came, uh, what the council came away from is understanding that if you don't plan, if you don't plan to succeed, you plan to fail. So it, 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 the year 2022, this year, <clears throat> is going to be spent, is the year is going to be spent with internal controls, proper protocols, establishing proper uh, ordinances, a whole nine yard. We're reviewing every, every protocol you can think of in our efforts to make sure that when we go into the budget season for 2023, we can literally go into our budget season with an understanding that the year 2023 will be a whole year of planning in so many different directions. You will understand why momentarily. As you see, one of the things I'm very proud of is that the staff uh, re basically came up with three areas, in this case, the refresh, the rebrand, and renew. Uh, the re uh, re refresh our city government, rebrand re our image, and renew the confidence, both internally and externally, in our city at that, that we can make things happen. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen, cities around us, as you, you know, we all live in this area, or if you come through this area, from Tyrone to Southwood to Union City, I sat through, Mayor uh, Williams' State of the City address about two weeks ago. And one of the things I became aware of as I sat through the different mayors and talked to the different mayors of Tyrone, everybody's growing. So we have to do our part to make sure that, they, that the neighboring cities don't outgrow us and nobody wants to live in our city. So as a result of that, you'll see the three, three uh, areas of, uh, that they've classified everything we're going to do from re renovating buildings to uh, literally uh, We've, we've hired a, a, a professional consultant communications director where right now we're very proud of just the image of our city is already picking up from information on television that uh, several of our residents have mentioned to us, the things, events they found out about. And so again, that's important. Your image uh, is, is everything. And so uh, we're very happy about the, some of the strategic plans that we're having to discuss as it relates to how we're going to get ahead. To go to the next slide. I won't go through all of these different areas but these were a lot of the areas that the members of council, when we asked them for their wish list, most of more than 60% of their wish list fell in one of these categories. And so again, we won't go, we won't go through all those items but again, later I'm gonna repeat it again. This will not be an overnight success. Uh, one of the things that if anybody that understands, we, you have to plan. And this, again, the staff, is, the staff is actually gonna take all this information and they're actually going to go on a retreat with the, uh, the city administrator, and they're going to put, create what is known as a KPI, uh, in this case, a, a, <clears throat> a, a productive measurements uh, that we can actually measure to make sure that we always understand where we stand and how far, how, how far we've gotten and how far we got to go. And so adjustments can be made as a result of your key performance indicators. Uh, again, you'll see just a couple of them that I, I, I highlighted in here. We, uh, the day-to-day -day operations, again, will take all that, you just, all that you just saw, those different categories. And then uh, one of the things that we're very proud of 
is that some of these areas are going to help us with programs that other cities have already executed. Some of the rental assistance, some of the business uh, funding to help small businesses. These are things that we're going to do. One of the things that we're going to have, we're gonna, one of the things that we have to do this year, again, we're spending this year getting our house in order, making sure any money, any federal money in particular that we distribute, we number one, know who it went to, and number one, make sure it's properly accounted for. For all of those of you uh, that are, they've got PPE loans, uh, all those loans, I'm sure right now you've already heard from the IRS that they're asking you for accountability of all that money. And so for, all the, all the, for those that don't know that, uh, you'll get a notice real soon, I promise you. <laughs> and so, and so uh, we're very excited about the, uh, one, of, one of the areas that we're going to talk about. We can go to the next slide. Next slide. We're going to talk about one of the things that we learned as a result of <clears throat> going to this retreat. You'll see where major cities have conducted what they call park and master plans. One of the things that every city understands is that we've got property, ladies and gentlemen, in our city. If you go to Highway 74, uh, just past Firehouse Subs, you go right in front of Ashbury Park, I can go, I can name over and over. One of the things that our uh, planning director is going to do for us, she's going to compile, her department, uh, along with the construction management team, is going to compile all the vacant property that the city owns, and we're going we're gonna to master plan that information. And we'll go to the next slide. One of the reasons we have to do this, because if you look at this slide right here, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if any of you guys have been to the city of Decatur. Uh, if you watch what the, the city of Decatur did in the last 12 years, it's almost unbelievable. And so what, if they can do it in Decatur, we can do it here in Fairburn. And so what did we do? We went and got a master plan that would talk to us about using vacant land that the city already possessed or, or can acquire <clears throat> through acquisition and actually do exactly what the city of Smyrna did. For those members of council that was here during my last term, we took the city council to the city of Smyrna, North Cross, Atworth, North Atlanta. We took the people to the different cities. And the reason why we did that, we wanted to show you the different things that were done in other, other cities that could be done here. That's how we got the manor at Broad. I'm gonna bring that up again too. That's a very key mark of, of project that was done for the reasons that I just named, but also because of some of the things that the staff is going to embark on. Uh, we're, very, we're very proud of this. A lot of people don't look at parkland as, as a major asset to your city. Quality of life increases when you, when you do the correct thing with parkland. <clears throat> Next slide. Next slide. Oh, no, go to the next one. Okay, and then I want, to, I want to give you a good example. If you look at some of the areas in Atlanta that have actually used the master plan, and the city of Atlanta has used it over several, uh, over, over several years, along with the, you know, this, uh, the city of Miami. You saw some of the other, I named one of the most, what I deem is one of the most key mark cities in the city of Decatur. Again, what that government was able to do with their vacant land and, and buildings, vacant buildings almost unheard of because again, their position was simple. We want the people that live in, this, in, this, in their city, I've talked to that mayor uh, and I've talked to several council members that live there in my last term and I went and basically asked him, tell me what, what did you do? And one of the things that we're not trying to do, we're not trying to create, the, recreate the wheel, we're going to people that's been there, done that, have already done it and we're simply asking, let us take notes uh, with our staff and let our staff help us get there. But again, it's not an overnight success. One of the things that we understand in all this beautification, it was a plan put in place. We know it takes a while to, do, to, to get projects uh, on the way. We, took, we passed a referendum in 2011. It took us until 2015, mid 2015, to get Duncan Park completely renovated. I'm not upset that it took us that long. We, we wanted to do it once and do it right. And that's what we're trying to do now. One of, uh, uh, you'll see one of, the, one of the areas that we talked about is transforming our downtown in, in three segments. The Hudson Plaza, GME, GMC campus and Broad Street. Next, next slide. And you'll see, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see the use of private and partner relationships that can help us upgrade and renovate our downtown area. We know private, private and public partnership works. That's what we did at the Manor at Broad. We know it works. And so again, the city is not trying to acquire all the debt. We're trying to come into partnership with major organizations that will help us bring our downtown and attract a quality of life and economic development that other areas can only dream of. 
Uh, Hudson Plaza, as you mentioned on that, that this is a, a conceptual site plan. When we talked about what we're gonna do in our downtown area, we have to give the council, we have to discuss what, what is known as conceptual site plan. What can it possibly look like? And so we embarked upon a professional uh, consultant agency that helped us put this together along with our staff that helped us what we call see the future before it manifests. And again, one of the things that I'm a firm believer, most of us in here, if you can't see it, you can't achieve it. It's just that simple. That's anything in life. And so one of the things that we, the city council and myself came together with our staff and we wanted to talk realistically. We had to see this before we can actually achieve it. Our goal, my goal for coming here, sharing it with you now is, is strictly to let you know that your council is not spending your time wasting your time just talking about whistles, you know, things that don't matter. We're talking about results. As we, on top of our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, requirements of what we're required to do as a government, we also are talking about things that we need to do as a government. That will make a mark in this city that we talked about today. One of the other, one of the next slides. You'll see, uh, in this case, the education camp is one of the things we talked about. We looked to the very far right of the screen. We talked about, in this case, some of the land acquisition. There are some properties in our city that we realize are for sale. And, and some of the things that we want to do again with our staff, we want to, we want to embark on these people actually did, uh, uh, acquiring some of the vacant property that we don't own. <coughs> and our efforts again go to the next slide. And our efforts to give us a separate site plan that will be realistic and we can again set a vision. You have to have a vision for what you're trying to do in this case. One of the things that I've talked to uh, several mayors, and I've talked to several mayors of Wake in the city of Augusta. They are part of some of the other mayors that are all about one. One of the things they told me, mayor, make sure that your staff and you and your city council have a plan for what you're trying to do. So you may not even be able to achieve a 50% of it. He said, but you can't, you'll never get there by accident. You have to have a plan. That's right. Mm -hmm. The next slide. And then one of the other third areas, uh, this area behind the landmark, right behind the right, well, Michael Fisher, the city of that lot that you see, uh, that, that, that's uh, identified there, the city owns about 50% of that land. And so one of the things that we're talking about is that we want to talk, we're going to talk to these landowners about, uh, again, acquiring land acquisition. If anybody knows anything about land acquisition, government, that's not normally a quick process. That's why I've been realistic with you as it relates to it's going to take a process. But we believe right now, if we don't start making uh, make a mark, and, and I'm talking about a, a staff coming in with plans, uh, performance measures, and, and, and based in this case, step-by-step -step, uh, goals and objectives, we're going to get left behind. The cities around us are growing. I know. I've, I've spent a lot of time since I've been in America looking at what other cities are doing. I'm not competing with it. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that happens, that everybody around us outgrows us, and we're now get, get everybody, all the businesses, we're getting all the apartments, we're getting everything, all the housing units that nobody wants. And so then, and so that's why we have to, that's why we, the district retreat was one of the most successful things that I think we've ever had because again, one of the things that I'm very proud of, again, ladies and gentlemen, this vision, this, this document was compiled by staff, but it, it, it contains over 60% of what the members of your council already want. And, and, and that, we found that out for exercise that uh, GMA, I want to thank publicly GMA for an mm -hmm. outstanding uh, job they did with uh, doing that retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, the next slide, you'll see uh, one of those, that, that, that area I just showed you, you'll look to the right, is uh, projected housing. These are, these are uh, again, conceptual site uh, uh, pictures of what we want to see Barry become. Okay, it's just that simple, ladies and gentlemen. And again, we're not with any one of the things we're trying to do, one of the things I talk to. Also, if you ride around the metro area, I don't know if you go over, I went over to the, the city of Collins Park this past weekend, and you go on Brightly Avenue, I used to live there years and years ago. One of the areas over there where T Meadows live, you'll see where they're not abandoned, they're not taking abandoned property and break down that. They're real them. They want to they want to maintain some of that culture that the culture that, that was established there. And so that's a that's a mixed that a mixed combination that we're trying to make sure. And again, my goal is again, I want I, I want a residence, a special residence that's been living here 30, 40, 50 years. I want you to be able to witness the transformation that you'll see. Uh, one of the things that we're uh, the next slide in this case, the comp plan. The comp plan is upgraded every five years. They just had an upgrade in 2021 that, uh, that allowed you to yield major stores, major use, and housing. Go to the next slide. 
<clears throat> and you'll see some of the some of the criteria that was that was considered during that last review uh, is going to help us. One of the things that uh, I heard loud when we were, when I was campaigning, and I heard it loud from other uh, members of council. We want a grocery store here. We want a store that people can be proud of. I, I don't remember anybody getting up saying uh, from, in Tyrone, I think I'm going to go and drive down the store and go to Circle K. That's wrong, Circle K. Man. Nobody goes to another city just to go there. And so, and so we're, we're trying to put people and put vehicles in place that will help us at least market what we have in terms of vacant lands and, 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 uh, and other and land we want to acquire. We want to talk about it again as we talk about mixed use. People that actually live in the downtown area, that's one of the things you saw that was further on the further end of Highway 29, right there at the corner of 120, uh, 138 and 29. We're trying to run again, like the ladies and gentlemen. We've got to prepare for the future. The future's coming. The question is, will we be ready for it? Yeah. And the last part again, this again, as we pass uh, a zoning uh, planning and zoning department continues to look at the different areas in our city that we have to modify or we'll have to make sure they're, they're tight. We're still making uh, modifications to our zoning code. As, as, as you heard earlier in uh, January, February, our city attorney's office spent out this hours right now trying to make sure our zoning codes. And so we're simply, again, ladies and gentlemen, again, that's a fraction of what we should talk about in 11 hours. In 11 hours of productivity. Again, I thought it was important to share that because one of the things I've realized uh, in public office, you can get so caught up in the humdrum that you totally forget, uh, especially in the body, you forget why you're here. Our goal is, if, and the question we're trying to make sure we ask with every elected the, uh, member here turns its prior, the question is, was the city better? Was the city better when you left than it was when you left? And so, with that being said, thank you so much for taking the time to listen.